And welcome back, everybody. We all have stuff going on in our life. We all have challenges. And sometimes those challenges prevent us from moving our lives forward. Sometimes those, those challenges are things that happened in the past. Some of them we're not even aware of, but it's impacting us now. Some of us feel stuck in relationships, in moving our lives forward with our careers, just feeling that that joy that you you know you deserve and you should be feeling, but maybe it's not happening for you. For that, there's life coaching. Very different today in terms of a life coach I found for you. And she's very honest, very transparent. We're going to dig into that. I think you're going to you're going to discover some things in yourself. I'm going to make you think today. Dawn Renee is with us, and she is with Living Beautifully Broken. That's the name of her practice. Interesting name, and I'm going to dig into that in a moment. Dawn, welcome. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you. I'm on right there. So a lot of times people say, uh, you know, I don't want to say I'm broken, or don't say they're broken. You go right for it. And I respect that very much. It's real. Yes, a lot of us have things we need to heal from i.e. a little bit broken, but that's our story. So it's okay to live that way as long as you move your life forward and and find those those reasons. Um why did you choose that name? I'm 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 intrigued. <laughs> um I I chose that name because I have realized throughout my life that even though we go through challenges and changes, the power of our words and how we choose to handle them should not should really determine the outcome of how we want that circumstance to be. One of the things I like to say is let your circumstances determine your happiness or your joy. Because if you do, you're going to have a very difficult time really deciding what you're going to be happy about and how you're going to handle your situation. You know, it's interesting. A lot of the situations we've been through or we're in now, we didn't choose them. You know, sometimes uh, in a relationship, somebody can do something so horrific. Relationships do take two, <laughs> side note. They do. <laughs> yes, but I mean, it could be the other person did this and you did this, but it's still, you're connected to it. But it's the way you react to it. That's what I'm getting from you. It's it's the the, the situations don't t- dictate your your life. It's the way you react to it. And very understandably, a lot of us go into freak mode, anxiety, panic, um, carry that with us. Then that translates to issues with our health. We don't even realize that that's why we have these chronic illnesses because we're dealing with stress or just you know energy that's not supporting us. Uh, you work people through that in many, many different ways. Through coaching, you do couples guidance, you even holistic approach. And it's like, you're like a 360. So I find that uh, very refreshing, very different. Um, Tell me your story before we even get to how you help others. You have a story. We all do. Um, You had a lot going on in your life that got you to this point, right? I sure have. Um, I got married at 19 and thought I was going to have my forever marriage. Um, During that time, we moved away from my family. Um, We had four children, and in the middle of all that, I got a very debilitating um, illness that took about four years for them to diagnose. Um, They told me that I would probably be in a wheelchair by the time I was 27, and at this time, I was very much into fitness. Um, That's kind of my stress reliever, I guess you could say, is working out and just trying to take care of myself, and I would do the same thing with my children. As time kind of moved on, um, he decided to make some life changes of his own and um, decided to get addicted to some very unhealthy things. And I became the brunt of that and decided that with four children, I wanted them to know that it's not okay for them to see how I'm being treated. And I didn't want my girls to think that was okay. And I didn't want my boys to think it was okay for them to do what they did. And so when he decided to move on, I let him move on. After that, I became a single mom and worked three jobs during that time, all while trying to go to school to do 
what I really, really wanted to do and um, still trying to make a decision. I knew I wanted to life coach. I knew I wanted to help people through issues. Um, but I also was very much into holistic health. That's actually what got me out of my debilitating illness was really changing my lifestyle with my eating and everything. Um, and after that, I got remarried again and was all excited about that, that I was living my dream again. And within nine months, he was diagnosed with a very rare cancer. He was only the third in the United States to have it. So I had to there again, change my course of life. I had to stop my schooling for a while, change my jobs. I either could put him in a nursing home or I could stay home with him. He had 27 hip and spine surgeries during this time and became totally disabled. So I chose to stay home and be be his caregiver. And the last three years um, was very tough for him. I pretty much did everything for him, but I was there when he took his last breath, which is what I promised. And from there, I decided to push forward again and try to finish some more of my schooling. And last December, I got married again to a wonderful guy. And he is really helping me make my dream come true. And my children have really um, received him and during all that, I've raised other teenagers in my home. I've got lots of kids that call me mom. And um, I've, I've just been really blessed through all this. So that's kind of my story. And that's really what I counsel on. Everything I counsel on, I've been through. I've been through miscarriages. I've lost a child. I've went through some dramatic changes with my family at a very young age, at 11 and 12. And so, yeah, it's kind of that's kind of where my story all kind of started and why I love doing what I do today. Wow. Um, thank you for your transparency and all of that. First things come to mind. During all of these, I don't want to call them mountains. I've, I've reduced that in my mind. They're speed bumps. We just got another speed bump. Got to go over to the next one, to the next one, until you get to a point where you, you, you intended to be. Did you along the way feel like why me why why is this happening to me and that i just did went through all that over there and now i got to go through this now I, like why did you ever think that say that oh so many times i can't even count i really did but i think what really changed is i'm a positive upbeat person and i was i've always been surrounded by people who have we all make different choices on how we're going to decide to fight through all these circumstances we go through. And being around a lot of negativity, unfortunately, I'm just not a negative person. And I really, I had to make an internal decision and it had to start with my words. I had to start speaking life to my situations, life to my children, life to myself and say, okay, Don, is this really, come on now, how are you gonna change this situation to keep getting where you wanna go? Don't give up on your dreams, don't give up on your goals. You may have to change them, but every single time I've been broken, it's a choice to make a decision to come out of that beautifully and to come out of that with being willing to share a story, not feel like ashamed of it. I, I have felt shame, oh my goodness. I wasn't raised to have a life like this. What, what is going on? But you know, it, um, there's so much power in our own thinking, in our own actions, and it can be such a healing process if people will just take time, to be real with themselves and remember who they were before all this stuff happened so that they can keep going where they wanted to be and now use all of these changes to make them even a more encouraging, more better person as we keep growing and going through life. Did you, along all these these challenges in your heart, did you did you feel that there's good coming my way? I know it's you know I got to do this, and then there might be another one after that. But I know deep down inside, I'm going to be good. It's it's gonna it's all gonna eventually work out. Did you feel that? You know, most of the time, not all the time, but I would get up in the morning and some of the jobs and companies I work with, I didn't see very many smiles. And one morning it just clicked with me and I said, you know what? 
have a choice today and I may not see anyone else smile, but I'm going to smile at myself and I'm going to make a decision. I am going to do my best today. I'm going to give it everything I have and how it turns out is how it turns out as long as I know I've really done my best and I've encouraged myself and I've at least encouraged one other person along the way. Dawn, how do you stay positive? Probably because I love Jesus. And he has given me a lot of encouragement through his word. And I think surrounding myself with people that believe in you is very huge in helping you to stay positive. Because you do have to have those friends that you don't always encourage, but they encourage you back. You know, you don't want all friendships that they suck everything out of you. And they give nothing back. And I've been very blessed to find that very small group of people I can call and say, okay, this is what I'm struggling with today. And you guys help me out here. And that's just so important because that's what helps us get the mindset. That, you know what? This may be where I am today, but the decisions I make today are going to change tomorrow. And if you keep doing that and you keep speaking life into yourself and you keep Looking at your goals as far as what you want for them really is possible. Do you feel that a lot of us don't look at our progress and then we just feel stuck? But if you take a look back where you were, even six months ago, what was I doing six months ago, a year ago? Where was I two years ago? Here I am now. Do you feel that we, we're just looking for the big change, but we don't see the incremental updates along the way? I do believe that, yes. Um, I myself have dealt with that a lot. In a couple of the years where I was going through the struggle in my first marriage, I thought, man, I am just stuck for life. Like, this is not what I chose. Every day I get up, I try to be positive, then this shuts me down. Or I try to do this, and this shuts me down. You know, not every day is going to be easy. Yeah. There are some days, I mean, like today, we could have a great day today, and then tomorrow we could, one phone call could just, swoop us right out of that. What's important is, is that we always remember where we want to go. And we have to always have the mindset that we believe in the direction we're going in. Mm. It's not easy, but it's, it, it can take, change takes time. Yeah. Well, that's it. And we're, <laughs> I, I call it the Amazon world, you know, pick up your phone, press a button, 3 PM. It's here today. Yeah. We expect that now. But that's not the reality with everything that's going on in our lives. Now, you mentioned, you mentioned a connection to religion. What do you say to people that may be thinking, you know, I'd, I'd like to go down that road and, uh, and, and fight it for whatever reason? They just don't believe that, you know, embracing a higher power is going to make a change in their life. So they're like, eh, and it's just like, yeah, I'm not going to deal with that. You know, I'm just going to do my thing, but it's floating in their mind out there. Um, how do you, how do you react to that? What would you say to them? I would just say this. <laughs> Why are you where you are today? And where do you want to go tomorrow? It really does all start in how we see ourselves. So. If you have been trying, it's kind of like they say, want to see changes, but you're doing it the same way all the time. And then you just, you get stuck in this rut that, well, I've tried this, I've tried that, I've tried this, I've tried that. I always encourage people, if you're trying the same thing over and over and you're not getting where you want to go, it's okay. Try something else. You know, not... I know there's people that are like into yoga and meditation and there's people that are into, you know, crystals and all this different stuff that they believe it's helping them. And all of a sudden they crash and they're like, well, that really couldn't have helped me. You should never be afraid. To try something different. And I think a lot of people want a quick fix. Like you said, I call it the microwave way of living. Put something in the microwave, you want it done today, but you don't want to go through the process of saying, maybe I should try that. You know, maybe, maybe there is something in that. It's like, I'm not here to tell people what they're doing wrong. 
I'm here to encourage people and to give them new ways to try to change from where they are now and where they want to go. I get the microwave thing. I'm the farthest thing from a cook. So, <laughs> you know, I'll throw it in the microwave. But based on what you said, I could put it in the oven and it would taste probably magnificent. But I just don't do it because like eh, either I don't believe it's going to taste better or I just don't want to put the effort in. So I just keep going back to the same old way. Ah, one minute, done. And I, I don't look at the other way because I just either it's either lazy or I'm just not believing it. But to your point, try it a different way. Take an extra couple of minutes, preheat the oven, put that dish in there, wait for it, taste it. Wow. It could be so much better. You know, I'm translating that to life in general and situations. Yeah. Um, it's. I think it starts with the realization. Um, can I share something with you? Go ahead. That'd be great. You shared. I. You know. I'm going to share, and this is in, kind of in real time. Um. So over the weekend, it it was my birthday, and I had a, a bunch of friends join us at a uh, just an outdoor uh, bar. You know, uh, just place on the water. And um, it was all left last minute. And the band, who I'm you know, kind of friendly with, they start singing the song Wonderwall by Oasis. I don't know if you know that song. It was big in the 90s. Um, look it up. It's a great song. And I always would hear that song, and I would think to myself, man, I'd love to sing that to somebody. Sing that, you know, who would that song fit? Um, so while they're singing it, I'm like, the heck with it. I jump up on stage. <laughs> I can't sing. And I just, you know, sang a couple of lines. It was all in fun. I think it sounded okay, but whatever. I'm going to read you some of the lyrics and the epiphany that I had after that. And it translates to what we're talking about. Today is going to be the day that they're going to throw it back to you. By now, you should have somehow realized what you got to do. I don't believe that anybody feels the way I do about you now. And I'm going to scroll down here to another pinnacle point. And all the roads we have to walk are winding. And all the lights that lead us, there are blinding. There are many things that I would love to say to you now, but I don't know how. Because maybe you're going to be the one that saves me. After all, you're my wonder wall. And after that, I, th I thought about it. I'm like, you know, who would that this song fit in my life? And the, the man that wrote it from Oasis says, wonder wall is an imaginary friend that is there to save you. My epiphany, the wonder wall is me. Or you. Yep. Because it doesn't connect. I can't connect it. Why do I love this song so much? And I didn't even like it back in the 90s, but now it like resonates <laughs> with me. Like, I don't know. But then I, I had that thought. It's like, oh, you're going to be the one to save you. Nobody else can do it. Only you can do it. And you think about all those lyrics, you know, life winding road, lights are blinding. It's not easy. Um, look the lyrics up. Listen to the song. That's all I'm going to say. Because the epiphany was like, Oh, whoa. Okay. That's why I like it so I'll much. Yeah. We, we are the only ones that can save us with help from people like you, but ultimately doesn't it start with us? It does. It has to start with each of us getting to a point where we desire the change and what we really want to be strong enough, to be willing to make the changes. And like I said, change can come, healing can come. We all have a story. And I have learned something that has empowered me through every situation that I've done. It's helped me realize that we all as individuals are a whole lot stronger than we believe we are. Amen. And that's why you need, you need to just, you have to start believing in yourself again and let someone else believe in you with you. And sometimes we don't always have that in our friends and family. We don't. Well, and, yes, because they're jaded and they're going to tell you they're going to tell you what you want to hear. <laughs> right? Well, they know you from young all the way up. Or if you've had friends from high school and middle school, they know everything that you've done. You know, but I don't think we realize internally that sometimes we don't really share with those that we're around what we're going through. And there's a lot of struggles that I have gone through and I've been a pretty quiet person. So coming on this podcast is really going to stretch me. You know what? I have a story and 
life can be good. It can be. And it all starts with, am I willing to make changes that I need to make? Am I willing to open up to someone and really allow those changes to come? That's really where it's going to start. How do you, by the way, I would never realize that you haven't done this before, spoke spoke your story. Uh, you're so genuine <laughs> and so real. Well, not on a pad- podcast format. I have um, with, you know, different speaking things. But like I said, a lot of this has been on hold for a long time. So it's been just individual or with couples or, sure. like I said, with friends or family. Sure. How do you, uh, how do you find the strength to change, to seek some guidance, some help? How do you get to that point? Maybe inside you're saying, yeah, I, I know I need to, but I, I, I don't pull the trigger. I can't move it forward. If you're stuck, you're stuck because you've chosen not to go forward. Plain and simple. I'll, I'll relate it to like losing weight. That's a big thing. It always has been for years. People want to lose 10 pounds. Okay, tomorrow I'm going to do this. Tomorrow I'm going to do that. And you, you set your goals. You set them so high. After the third day, you're like, I cannot keep this up. It all starts with the first change going, I don't want to be like this anymore. This is what my goals used to be. This is what my dreams used to be. They may have changed a little bit, but I can still have some of that happiness. It starts with one little change at a time. One little goal change at a time. If you put the whole massive thing out there in front of somebody, like if I were to say, okay, this is what we're going to work on for the next six weeks, you're going to do boom, 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 boom. There's so much overwhelmness in that. And there's already enough of that in this world the way it is. It's one little change at a time and then being brave enough mm. to become beautifully broken through one change at a time to get where you truly want to be. Give me, we're just about out of time. Give me one phrase or a a sentence that pilots your life now. One phrase or sentence that pilots my life right now. Maybe your, your mantra, whatever, what, what is Dawn? If you want to have a positive life and you want have a good day give yourself grace because you're worth it and a lot I, of it is we got to give ourselves grace we give other people grace do we give ourselves grace no no not very much and a lot of people maybe say well there comes the religion thing again no, but grace is it's giving ourselves okay not be okay to choose change perspective be from okay to better better to best best to awesome living beautifully broken is your practice so i'm gonna I, i'm gonna throw this question are you still broken In some ways i am still broken um i go back to what my past was and I've always wanted to tell my children, look at, we made it 50 years. We were married 50 years. They will never, I, I won't be able to say that to them. You know, and I, I, I look at my, my bonus kids now, that's what I call my stepchildren. After losing their dad to cancer, he's not here to share in all of the changes that his grandkids, biological grandkids are going through graduations, marriages, everything. You get a sense of brokenness through that Mm. because you literally have to change your dreams. And it doesn't mean you have to change your ultimate dream, but you have to, I had to give up on the dream that I was going to have the Cinderella lifestyle, marry and be there and grow old with the same person. So yes, you don't always, you're always going to have brokenness but really, I'm here to share my story that that brokenness, what it's done for me to be stronger, how it's helped me encourage people, and how it's let me know that, hey, it's okay. I didn't let that completely break me. 
I may feel broken when I go back and think about it, but it didn't break me because now it's part of my, my beautiful story. It's part of me encouraging my children through their life challenges now because their mom experienced it or a friend because their friend experienced it. So yes, brokenness doesn't go away in some situations, but it can become beautiful depending on how you choose to share your story and how you get up every day and say, okay, I went through that. So guess what? If this happens today, that's nothing compared to what I went through. You know what? I got this. I got today. I can do this. I can do it. Yep. <laughs> I relate. Um, I always say, and I don't think it's a cop out. Nothing surprises me anymore. In the past, Isn't things the truth? <laughs> things would come up and I'd be like, oh my God. And they could be the littlest things or, or it's things you would make up in your mind or I would. And now it's just like, like, like Dory and Finding Nemo, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. <laughs> uh, it's true. You know, as you were talking about that, we're over time, by the way, but whatever. The lyrics, uh, local singer, I haven't seen him in years, but you know, I'd call him a friend. You know, I could reconnect with him anytime. He's got one song that stands out, folk singer. The core is still the same, but there's a few more cracks there in my shell. Yeah. You know, we all got cracks. We're we're a little broken, but that you can better when somebody works with somebody like you, better realize what the brokenness was. So it's easier to figure it out and uh, maybe mend some of the cracks there in the shell. Yep. You know? You know, you always paint over things that are broken. You know how when a crack okay. in the wall, you fix it and you paint over it and it's beautiful again. That's how your life can be. Mm -hmm. Is we if we don't choose if we don't we need to choose to not let the brokenness really determine our life and have us just keep going down and down and down when there's so many other things out there they're just waiting for us if we will give it the chance. How do we uh, take a chance? Connect with you? Start a conversation to that change? Um, you can reach me at um, livingbb.org. That's my website. My email is donrenee at livingbb.org. My phone number is 952-200-1103. We got to get the t-shirts made up. I'm broken, but I'm happy. <laughs> 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 well, it is. We all have a story. We all have some brokenness, but you can still move your life forward. Thank you so much for being here today, Dawn. Love your honesty, transparency. We got lots to talk about next time we get together. Sounds great. Nice meeting you, Steve, and you have a blessed week. You too. We'll be right back. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's, it's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage-free, fully adaptive, handicapped accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.